but you're gonna see it's not always easy. So I unwrapped this cable, and this was my my downfall right here. It gets tangled. Hey everybody, it's Mike here from The Art of Guitar. I'm here today with kind of a different sort of video. I had a show this last weekend and uh, we had to set up outside and it was a relatively small stage and it was a little bit chaotic, but it reminded me of all the crazy shows I've had in the past where you have to show up sometimes, set up as soon as the last band got done, do it as fast as possible, play an entire set, and then tear down as quickly as possible so the next band can come up and start setting up. And I thought that would be really fun to experiment and just test myself and see how fast I can set everything up from all my gear just being off to the side of the stage to setting it up and being ready to play the set. I would time that, then I would time myself tearing down and see if I can get the hell off the stage in record time. Because what a lot of people don't realize is that you can't just sit around or stand around and talk to your friends after your set. Some people do. You have to get off that stage, but you don't want to break things. You don't want to uh, be so fast that you make big mistakes and screw up your gear. So there's a lot of little things that you have to think about. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the playback of what I just did out in the other room. Uh, I set up and tore down and timed myself. And I'm going to walk you through with commentary to tell you what I was thinking and some of the mistakes that I made. Okay, the setup. You're not going to hear any volume, by the way. So I'm kind of talking. I'm just like, okay, here we go. I wore a camera on my chest. It's my phone, by the way. I had to buy this vest for it. Okay, I started the timer. I went right for the guitar stands right off the bat because you need them to be set up so you can set your guitars on them. I use two guitars live, so I bring two stands. I really like having a backup. So the next thing I do is I grab my amp. That's my jacket that I have to wear for the show. And then that is a really important thing right here. That's my pedal board. And it's in this huge bag that has zippers on it. So the top part of the bag has all the cables that I'm gonna need for the show. So it has like power cables and guitar cables and stuff. And the main part of the bag has obviously my pedal board. So once the pedal board is taken out and the amp is set up back there, a huge chunk of the, the hard work is done. But you're gonna see, it's not always easy. So I unwrapped this cable, and this was my my downfall right here. It gets tangled. Now, I had already played a show, and I didn't put my cables back very well, so everything's just kind of suspect here. Look how long it takes me to get this damn cable unwrapped. That could have been easily mitigated, by the way. So I finally get it unwrapped. I take the main cable that goes from the pedal board to the amp and I plug that in. And I kind of made a mistake. I should have plugged in my amp and turned it on so it could warm up. Just leave it in standby, you know? Okay, so this is the AC cable for the actual amp. Hopefully there's power on the stage. That's always an issue too. So now the amp is turned on, but it's on standby. So it's warming up essentially. Now this is the power supply that goes to my pedal switcher. And uh, I get a little bit nervous because it's kind of a dinky cable. And I'm like, man, if this thing ever shorted out on me, I'd be kind of screwed, you know? So I might have to buy a backup of that. Plugged it in. Everything's being plugged into an outlet that's next to the stage. Now this is the main power supply for my pedal board. All these little cables that I have to hook up take up a lot of time in this situation. So I'm finally to my main guitar. It's kind of cumbersome to sometimes have to bring it on stage with a case and everything like that, but I already have the strap on this guitar. The one thing I have to do is grab the whammy bar though and the uh, capo out of the, ca out of the case. So I put the capo on the top, screw in the whammy bar, set it on the stand. So that one's good to go. Get the case out of the way. Grab the SG case. I love the SG. This one I can't pack with the strap put on it, so I have to put, put it on after the fact, after opening it up. That's pretty quick. Now I have both guitars ready to go. Gotta get the case out of the way here. That's <laughs> the little neon heart that I use in my heart tribute band. I have to set that up sometimes. 
Now I'm taking off my hoodie because sometimes when I play live, I have to wear certain jackets. So this is the one for the heartband right here. And now this is where I have to tune the backup guitar. This is actually not a backup in this case. It's my second guitar that I end up using. So I turn on my tuner and my pedal board and I tune it up really quick. I don't spend too much time on that because on stage usually I have a couple seconds between songs to do that. So, but I wanted to make sure I got it close. Okay, once that's done, I mute the pedal board. I pick up my main guitar. I do the cable trick where you put it behind the uh, strap so you don't rip it out by stepping on it. Grab a pick, unmute the pedal board. Now I tune, I almost tried to tune up by the headstock, but I have locks, so you have to tune up back there. Okay, once that's tuned up, make sure everything's good to go. Take the amp off of standby. And as soon as I get sound, I am so relieved. It's like, thank you so much for working. I test out my wah pedal and I turn on all my pedals for my pedal board. And I hit stop. All right, so four minutes and 38 seconds, it's not terrible. Usually we get a lot more time than that between bands. You know, they have to do the drum, they have to put all the microphones on the drum kit and they have to do all this kind of stuff. So I'm usually okay if I could set up around under five minutes, but I still thought I was gonna get around three minutes. So it's kind of a bummer. Okay, so now let's talk about the teardown, which could be just as stressful as setting up. The only difference is that you could really just throw a lot of stuff in your cases. You don't have to really be too careful about wrapping them or anything like that. In fact, if you're the guy on stage carefully wrapping every cable to put back, people are gonna hate you. So get things into your cases, like my uh, gig bags and all that stuff, my uh, guitar cases, get everything in there as fast as possible, get off the stage. You can't spend a ton of time being super detailed on your way out. So you're gonna notice that I'm not nearly as diligent when I'm taking down and getting off the stage. So here we are, I'm about to hit start on the stopwatch. Here we go. Go. So I hit the last chord. Now something weird happens here. I set my guitar down and I kind of blank out. And I'm like, oh yeah, I have to grab my guitar. I have to grab the guitar I just sat down. So I mute the pedal board, I unplug the guitar. The cable doesn't come off my strap, so I have to throw it. I take the whammy bar off. Sometimes you make the mistake of putting it in the case with the whammy bar on. That could be bad for the bridge sometimes. Sorry, I don't have the best camera angle back there, so. I take the guitars down first so that there's no chance of people who are walking by and you know, knocking things over. I don't want people knocking into my guitars, and I also don't want people tripping over my cables and pulling the guitars uh, possibly off of the stands, because that could be bad for the necks, obviously. Okay, the guitars are in the cases. The neon heart is shut off, so is the amp. I just throw the stands off to the side. I don't collapse them. Don't want to take up time doing that. Now the pedal board. Stupid play button here. So you basically have to just undo all the cabling that you did. So there's uh, the main cable that goes to my guitar. There's all the extra cables that were just laying there. And then I have to unplug the cable that goes from my pedal board to my amp, which I just did there. Unplug the AC cable from the amplifier. Kind of just smush them all together and throw them into the case because what I usually do is go back to my studio afterwards and maybe the next day when I'm not so tired, I'll wrap them really nice. But I just want to make sure I'm as quick as possible here. So I pull out the uh, gig bag case. My zippers only go one direction. If I go the other way, it gets stuck. I hate that, so I might have to get a new gig bag for that. So I threw the uh, I threw the pedal board in the bag. That went pretty quick. Now all I have to do is get the cables into that top flap. This is where you're gonna usually lose something because you're in such a hurry throwing stuff in the bag that if you forgot one cable or you forgot something small like a capo, sometimes those things can get lost. I got a little bit caught up right here. I look over, I notice there's two more objects that I almost forgot. See, it's easy to you know leave things behind. So I kind of just mash them together. One of them is an outlet, the other is a power cable. I unzip it. Just I, I, I unzip the wrong part of the gig bag, but I didn't care at this point. Now I get caught up again. See how... It, the zipper got caught right there, and then right there as well. So the zipper got caught like two times. So that took like 30 extra seconds. Get that off the stage. 
All that's left, I think, is the amplifier now. Which you got to be careful if you use a tube amp because it's still hot. And if you, you know, set it down really hard, it can be bad for the tubes. I hit stop. Two minutes and 54 seconds. So I actually got it under three minutes, which I was really happy about. Teardown, I want to get that down to two minutes. And uh, for setup, I really want to get it to around three and a half minutes tops, not four minutes, 30, 38 seconds. The next time I do this, I think I can get it down to about three and a half minutes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to review this video even further, and I'm going to write down all the steps that I took to do this and see if I can, uh, you know, streamline it a little bit better. For example, I could easily have uh, a better system for my cables. So when I take them out, Maybe one's already plugged in and all I have to do is, you know, bring it to my amp. And there's a lot of different little things that will add up over time. So I'm going to try to come up with a really efficient plan to see if I can get my times down by quite a bit. And next time you watch the follow-up video, hopefully I'm able to reach that. I'll probably do that next week sometime. So it should be fun. What I would love to see is if you're in a band and you have to set up quickly like this, if you could time yourself and tell me what your numbers are, you know, if you were able to set your stuff up relatively fast or if it surprised you at how long it actually takes you to set up and tear down. Keep in mind as well that this is a pretty ideal situation. We're not outside. There's not drunk people trying to talk to you or talk to me in this situation. I only had like a few cables I had to walk over. Sometimes you really have to watch where you're stepping. There aren't people you know, carrying drums past you or anything like that. So uh, this is one of those ideal situations, but I still took way too long. If you are in a band and you've experienced this before, I'm pretty sure you could empathize with my level of stress rising a little bit when I have to set up so fast. And uh, that's even before you play one single note. That's the craziest part. Then you play a full show, then the stress level elevates again when you have to tear down, especially when you look to the side and you see the next band just waiting to get on the stage. Uh, you don't want to be that guy that holds everybody up. Okay, everyone, thanks again for watching, and be sure to catch the follow-up video that I'm going to do after about a week's worth of planning. So we'll see you before then with other videos, but uh, hopefully you check that one out too. Okay, thanks everybody. Bye-bye.